In this project, we want a list that can show expenses. And previously, we would have done that with a state array. Here though, we'll make a different approach. We'll make a separate expenses class that will be attached to our list using at state. Now this might sound like we're making complexity for nothing at all, but it actually makes things much easier as you'll see. This whole expenses class can load itself and save itself. It'll be almost invisible. First, we're going to decide what an expense actually is. What do you want to store in a single expense? In this instance, it'll be exactly three things. The name of the item we're expensing, whether it's business or personal, and its cost as a double. We're going to add more to this later on. But for now, we can store all three of those things in an expense item struct. You can put this into a new SWIFT file called expense item .swift if you want to, but you don't need to. You can just put it directly into here for now. As long as it's not inside the content view, you're okay. Regardless of where you put it, you want to do this. Struct expense item has a name string and a type string and an amount double, like so. So now that we have something here that represents a single expense, the next step is to store an array of those inside a single object. This has to use the observable macro so SwiftUI can watch the whole thing. As with the extents, uh, expense item struct, it'll start simple and it can be a separate file or not, it's down to you. So I'll say here, at observable, class expenses has an items array which starts out live as a new expense item array, like that. And that finishes all the data required for our main view. We have a struct up here for a single item and a class to store a whole array of those items. And now we'll put it into action in our SwiftUI view down here. So we actually see something on the screen fairly quickly. Most of our view will be a list showing items our expenses, but because we want users to delete items later on, we can't use a simple list anymore by itself. We'll use a list with a for each inside the list. So we can access the on delete modifier. First things first, in our struct here, we're gonna add a new property to store our expenses class. So I'll say at state private var expenses, expenses is a new expenses class, like that. Remember, using at state here is just to keep the object alive. The observable macro does a whole work of checking when things have changed and notifying SwiftUI views to update themselves. Second, we can use that expenses object inside our view body with a navigation stack, a list, and a for each to make a basic layout. So I'll say navigation stack here, with a list inside, then for each, our expenses, expenses, items, ID of its name, one item coming in, I'll just do text item dot name. Then for a title, I'll say I expense, like so. So with telling the for each, it can identify each expense item in the array using its name uniquely. Then it prints the name out inside each list row. Now we're gonna add two more things here to our simple layout before we're done. One is the ability to add new items for testing purposes, and one, the ability to delete items with a swipe. We're gonna let users add their items soon. That matters, obviously, having your own custom items. But for now, it's important to check our list actually works before we continue. And so, we're gonna add a toolbar button down here that creates an example expense item instance for us to work with. So I'll say below navigation title, we have a toolbar with a button inside saying add expense using system image of plus, so icon as well as text. Then we'll have expense equal a new expense item with a name of test, a type of personal, and the amount of five. And then do expenses dot items to append that expense. And that brings it up to life. We can press Command R now, see it run. I'll press this plus button, which by the way, does just show as plus because SwiftUI adapts automatically. It won't show this label at expense in a toolbar, but it'll still use that for voiceover and similar. I'll press plus here to add test again, 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 like that. Bunch of these things flying in there nicely. 
And now we can add expenses. We also want to write code to remove expenses. And that means adding a method capable of removing a whole index set of items. So we'll say in here, func remove items at offsets an index set. And then we'll call expenses.items.remove at the offsets of those offsets. And now we can attach that to Swift UI up here for our for reach. I'll say we have an on delete perform of remove items. Call that when swipe the delete's triggered. Now go ahead and press uh, command R again, run it back, and then press add a bunch of times, and then swipe the delete on one like this one here. Boom, away it goes. So we're adding and deleting items nicely. Now, remember, we have said up here that we can go through all the items in our expenses array and identify them all uniquely by their name. That's not true here, right? We have the same name multiple times. Test, 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 many, many tests. And we can't guarantee our expense items will be unique either. They could have the same thing, lunch, personal, five bucks. If you eat the same thing regularly, it'll be exactly the same. Often, like here, it'll just work, even though you might see complaints down here in Xcode. But other times it'll cause bizarre, broken animations in your project. So let's look at a better solution for this next.